Hi, I'm Olivia, and this is Virtual Kitchen, where I like to talk about subjects such as uh, spirituality, meditation, um, ritual, cooking, fermentation, and I like to try and bring these subjects together in new ways or strange ways. It's just a, a, it's a work in progress, and um, hopefully you'll enjoy the ride with me. And so today, I'm going to start a little video series around water because I discovered or I heard about this, this book, The Hidden Messages in Water from Masaru Emoto. Basically, the quintessence of this book is that he did experiments with freezing water and then took photos of the crystals that formed under a microscope and did various experiments with like location, with music, with words to see how these different things um, influence the water. And the res results are kind of mind-boggling, bogglingly um, beautiful. So I wanted to basically go through this book chapter by chapter and each for each chapter I will do a, a new video around something having to do with water. Um, this could be flavor water or I don't, I don't even know yet. Like it's gonna, um, it will just develop over time. But today I'm going to make um, water kefir, which is also something that I had knew nothing about hadn't heard it before, hadn't even tried before, and then my friend introduced it to me on the weekend. And she gave me a bunch of her, um, her SCOBY crystals. And so I wanted to start my own batch because they are quite little persistent bits of bacteria and yeast that need tender loving care. So there will be no waiting around this time. Even just hearing about it and seeing a couple of the photos of the photographed water kind of completely changed my perception. As most of us know, our body is mainly made up of water, 70% water. So if we know how much, how much of an effect words, music, um, stress can have on, on water, then it, it definitely shows us the huge effect that those things have on our bodies as well since we're basically what we are anyways something that i will be diving into in the next weeks and hopefully you will flow along for this um this little journey i've tried to start drinking a lot more water um it makes a huge difference i've been uh, dialing back on uh, coffee on alcohol anyways and the more I do that, the better I feel, the more receptive I am to information and just, you know, things are, things are flowing a little bit better. So this video is about the prologue. And um, one of the things he goes into is about how um, water in a river is constantly in motion and that is what keeps it, keeps it clean and pure. And it's only when it stops moving that it's stagnant. So if you imagine that also in your own physical um, vessel, the more water that is flowing through you and the clearer your um, the clearer the pathways in your body are, then the better you're going to be doing. Uh, water is the way that you know our nourishment even uh, makes it to the different parts of our body. So it's extremely important, which everyone knows, but you know, for some reason, sometimes you need to see it in a photograph of a crystal to understand properly. Um, here's a photo on the cover, just so that we know what, uh, so you know what I'm talking about, a photo of water crystals, which is amazing. And this is also something we know anyways, just from seeing, you know, snowflakes. Everyone learns that still unbelievable fact that each snowflake is different. I had never thought about the fact that a snowflake would also, or that water would look completely different if it was coming from one source of water than from another. And so basically in this book, he is 
going into the kind of universal lessons that we can learn from water and how it is a key to understanding the cosmos, which is, yeah, which is just going to be fun. One of the other crazy things is that him and the people that were working with him doing these experiments, they also played music to water, um, which completely changed its structure and they also um, put words near the water. So they like taped a phrase to the, to the vessel that the water was in and that also completely changed it. And the most beautiful water crystal that they captured on um, camera was love and gratitude. But yeah, basically using um, negative vocabulary just made the um, water crystals fragmented. So if you imagine, you know, a negative sentence that you tell yourself um, over and over in certain situations, um, knowing that your body is 70% water and that these words have such a huge effect on the water, that kind of gives you a clue as to how, how strong it will have an effect on your um, body as well. So that was just a little introduction and I'll have just a couple points from the prologue and now I will make um, some water kefir. Okay, so water kefir, no one's really sure where it comes from exactly, but it is also, there's definitely a Mexican version called Tibicos, and um, they found various places that had it um, around the world, but no one's really quite sure where it started or where the original SCOBY grains came from. It's a water with, that you add a SCOBY, so a um, symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast too. Yeah, you're basically fermenting sugar water and then you add some, you can add some flavor to it, so you add some fruit or your dried fruit and then you have a fermented um, tonic water that is really um, nice and subtle and very tasty. And you can, you can also do this with uh, coconut water, with, you know, like grain milks or soy milk or, you know, almond milk, rice milk, or also fruit juice, juices, although you need to dilute them a little bit if they're like a strong, a strong fruit juice, like pineapple or, you know, something like that. So this is what they look like. They're just these little, just slightly, like you can squeeze them a little bit but they're, um, they're quite, they're quite solid. So, this is what it looks like. These little, I mean, it's kind of like the scoby that you, for kombucha, just in a, in a different shape. Ta-da. There we have them. You can actually hear them. I don't know if I'm imagining that, but. Yeah, it's a, it's a yeast and a combination of yeast and bacteria. And so when we add this to the water and add the fruit, then yeah, it starts the process. And these are, these grow quite quickly if you feed them regularly. So um, you have to add sugar to your water kefir every like two days or so to keep them alive. If you go away for a while, then um, stick them in some fresh water with um, sugar in the fridge. If you go away for a longer amount of time, then you might either have to get someone to come and babysit it or use a dehydrator to dehydrate them and save them, or you can also um, dry them out and freeze them. Yeah, so basically, um, they're also referred to as sugary water grains, tibicos, like I said, Tibetan crystals, Japanese water crystals, or bees wine, which um, I'll have to look up why exactly, quite interesting. And um, water kefir is not related to milk, fermented milk kefir, just kefir. Basically, it's good to use a wide mouth jar. So I have three liters of water now. A good rule of thumb is two cups of sugar for four liters. So since this is three, I'm gonna do like one and a half. This is another kind of thing where you can kind of wing it, you know? So you only need, 
like a tablespoon per liter, but since I have so much from my friend because because hers was growing like crazy, I'm probably gonna well see how much it is. That's one tablespoon, two tablespoons, three. So technically I only need three, but I have about six. If you are a friend of mine watching this in Berlin, then come and grab yourself some grains. But so I'm just gonna put all of these in for safekeeping. And then you can add fresh or dried fruit. I'm just using um, some leftovers, so I've got like putting in four dates. And I'm putting in some uh, sultanas, because I don't even know why I have these. I never eat them. This is a ferment that, that isn't reliant on air, so you can seal it. It's also okay if you just cover it. That, you know, that won't have any bad effect, but you don't need to conceal it. Okay, now we wait two to three days, then we strain the fruit out and put it into bottles and then let the bottles carbonate for two more days. And then if there's too much um, pressure, then move them, move the bottles to the fridge. And then we just clean the grains and uh, start a new batch if we want. And so you have to feed your water kefir new sugar every two days or three days if it's, um, if it's cold. Because if you leave it alone too long, then um, the grains can um, pickle and then they die. And no, that's it. That was it, you messed up. Using distilled or purified water can inhibit the process or make it go slower. So it actually flourishes in mineral rich water, so, or like hard water. So this is gonna work perfectly in Berlin because the water's uh, soup, like, has so much calcium in it. Do a little update in a couple days and then we'll see how this progresses. One water kefir, one experimental, new experimental adventure, one new ritual to add to the kitchen. If you enjoyed learning about water kefir, you want to see what else I talk about with regards to water in general and the magical book about the hidden messages of water, then please like and subscribe, send this to a friend, and please let me know if you try this yourself or if you are in Berlin and you want some grains, and I have plenty to share. That's, that's it for now. Hello, it's been a couple of days and the water kefir is now done. The fruit is all floated to the top lost its color and changed the color of the water and so now i have to drain it and then i will fill it into a bottle and start a new one okay so i rinsed i rinsed the scoby i put new water and sugar together put the rinsed scoby back in and now i'm just gonna start a new one with some like kaffir lime leaves because i have quite a few Let's see what that tastes like and some lime yeah and then the process starts all over again. And meanwhile, I have the last batch. So I'm gonna give it a try. Yeah, it's just like a tasty uh, soda water. So just be bottling it up and then drinking. And there we have it. Fizzy date and grape flavored, um, subtly flavored water kefir. And uh, thank you for watching and please like and subscribe.